there in the 70s because I was going to school, I was finishing up my degree, and uh, I needed a cheap loft space, and I couldn't find it in New York City. Okay? And um, there was one available here, a friend told me of one available here, so I came here. Uh, at that, it was right after the riots. Um, a lot of the old, beautiful old buildings, well, they may not have been beautiful to some people, but they were beautiful to me. And some of them looked like they went back to pre-slavery days. Wow. They were that old. Now, um, a lot of them were still standing then, but within a matter of five or ten years, they were all bulldozed. They were all torn down. The people were moved out. and Plus, there had been some that had been destroyed as a result of the post-riot stuff. So, um, Newark was a shamble. A lot of the um, industry that had been here had left, and those buildings were a shamble. And that was where all the artists went to find supplies to make art, things that they could use to make what became found object art. Or found object, found object oh, okay. art. And, and that, was a, that took its own progression. And out of that progression um, was, well, added on to that was the Afrocentric uh, culture, which was attaching itself, beginning to attach itself to the Aruba religious um, sciences. Uh, mythology, let's okay. say mythology, okay? And, and um, a lot of African American people, the, I'm from the Caribbean, and we've had those religions, right. we never lost them. So, but what was happening here is African American people were just rediscovering them. Right, yes. So their attachment to it was ferocious. Ooh. Now, what time are we talking about? We're talking about the late 70s, early 70s, okay. early to mid 70s, 74, okay? Um, there was a ferociousness about the way that they were attaching it, themselves to it because of this need to belong. Everybody yes. has that need. Yes. Yes. A child wants to yes. be a part of the family. A child wants to belong to the mother. There's that belonging. It doesn't make you whole if you're not. Don't belong somewhere. Hey, sweetheart, how are you? Um, so that was going on. Um, the Ironbound was changing from being Italian to being Cuban, Portuguese, Spanish. There was a lot of racism between the African Americans and the Italians. And I experienced that. Why? Because I had the skills to work in a print shop, a photographic print shop. They, one of the guys who was Italian hired me because he didn't care about the color of my skin. The other guy, partner, made him fired. So there was a lot of, a lot of things, a lot of tension. Tension. I was, be, I would be walking down the street with an African American friend of mine. The cops would pull up. In the car would be a white cop and a Chinese cop, which is unusual for Newark. They stopped us, asked him to see his ID. Now I said to them, why do you want his ID for? It was reminding me of Berkeley and Oakland in the 60s, which is what they did there when I lived there. I said, what do you think, he robbed the bank or something? So they were shocked that I had the nerve to ask. Right. And I'm looking at the Chinese guy thinking, you're Chinese, why are you letting him do this to us? <laughs> <laughs> Without realizing that he was not going to do anything, right. you know. And uh, then they said to me, well, he looks like somebody that we saw down there who was doing something that he shouldn't have been doing. I said, come on, man. I, this is ridiculous. They finally let us go after I raised the big stink, okay? But like, I had lived in California and I'd gone through that in the uh, 60s with the Panther Party, the riots, the whole stuff in California. And when I came back here and I experienced it again, it was like a, a rude awakening, okay? So that came down, New York was changing. There's people like Willie Cole, Visa Washington, making that African American art connected to the Yoruba, whatever, 
And then there's people like Peter Whitney and uh, myself and other people doing, and, and Roy Cross doing the other type of the work, which is just work based on the history that we know of art and so forth and so forth, and our own spirituality. Okay? So that's the New York that I came to when I came here. And I watched it evolve. And it's really been amazing to watch it evolve. Because every day I wake up and I turn, every five years I go, wow, oh my gosh, look at this building, look at that, look at this. You know? So it's been amazing and I think it's gonna keep on evolving. I think it's gonna be like Brooklyn. Very, within the next 15, 20 years, it's gonna be exactly like Brooklyn is now. And people are gonna be leaving here to go somewhere else because the rents are already skyrocketed to the point where it's absolutely amazing. Two thousand dollars for an apartment, a one-bedroom apartment. You can that's what that's what they're charging around here and more. You know, so restaurants are coming in. You know, um, so it's gonna it can't go anywhere else. And, and the culture continues to explode. And the culture and there's a whole new set of people moving in now, yes. which is really fantastic. And what I notice is a lot of African American people left here in the 60s and early 70s are starting to move back to New York. They are now in the position where they have jobs, secure jobs with good salaries, or they're retiring. And they're coming back, and so there's this new turnover that's happening now. It's nice. I think it's really great, great for the city. 